the purpose of this podcast is to do after reading activities, and it's after you have read Aaron's gift. So, where you are now, you've read Aaron's gift, or you've had it read to you while you followed along, and you annotated Aaron's gift meaning you put S's and T's and E's and A's and L's and N's in the margin, and you underlined those portions that you were marking with those S's, T's, E's, A's, L's, and N's. So you should have a bunch of markings and underlinings all over the story Aaron's gift. So it has been annotated while you read. Now you need to do the next step, and that involves completing this chart. So you got caught stealing Aaron. Now you need to look through all the S's, and you need to find the best S, the best example of Aaron's speech that tells you a lot about Aaron. Don't just pick any S. Pick the best one. It really tells you a lot about his character or his personality. Write the page number and the line that the quote comes from. Write enough of the quote, which is about a sentence, so we know exactly where it's coming from and what it is and why it's important, and then you fill in, you interpret that speech or any of the other annotations. This quote suggests that Aaron, is what you'd write on the line, is what? And you'd put some thought about what Aaron's speech says about him. Next, you'd put a quote about Aaron's thoughts or T. What do his thoughts say about him? Next, his effect on others. Put the quote, in here, what do what his effects on others say about him? Do the same with actions, looks, and narrator comments. So this table needs to be completed. After you've completed this table, you need to do part three, which is point of view. And first you need to circle the point of view from which this story is written. Is it first person? And that means is Aaron the one narrating the story? Or is another character in the story narrating it? So you'd see the pronoun I, or my, or me, or our throughout the story. Or is it third person? And you have two types of third person. Third person omniscient means that the narrator can get into the heads of many different characters. So the narrator can tell you the thoughts of more than one character, and sometimes even get into the heads of multiple characters. Then there's third person limited. This means that the narrator is third person, not in the story, but the narrator focuses on one character's thoughts. can only tell you what one character is thinking. That's why it's limited. Omniscient means that it's kind of all-seeing. It can jump into the heads of many characters. So select one of these. Once you've selected one of those, you need to back up your thinking. So you need to go back into the story. You need to find it, and you've got to think like a lawyer here. That's why it says Exhibit A. And you're going to say, well, I think it's third-person omniscient, or I think it's third-person limited, or I think it's first-person. And here's why. Find a quote, page and line. Make sure you mark that. Write one sentence from the quote, or maybe more if you need it and then tell us why you chose that quote. In other words, tell us why it is either first person, third person, or third person, third person omniscient, or third person limited. So you're proving why you circled one of these. And you just need two examples for why. Exhibit B, this would be another example. Here is why I chose. Here is the quote, and here is why I chose it. So, just to review. Let's say you chose third-person omniscient. You may want to show how, in one instance, the narrator got into one character's head, and then explain, well, the narrator was able to jump into this character's head, and then show how the narrator gets into another character's head for Exhibit B. If it's first-person, you need to show how it's I or my or how the character's in the story. If it's third-person limited, you need to show how it's only focused on one character. Even though the, the narrator is not in the story, the narrator is still only focused on the thoughts of one character. And this will take you to the conclusion of your after-reading work. Thank you.